Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In this tutorial, let's deep dive into the fundamental aspect that can significantly enhance your DAX writing process. So I'm going to talk about DAX variables. The variables are basically like the unsung heroes of DAX, which bring in order, efficiency and readability to your formulas. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the DAX variables. I'm going to explore their syntax, their importance and the real world usage. But before we jump into the DAX editor, let's make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on any of the valuable Power BI insights. So let's get started. Now you might have this question, what exactly is a variable? Now variable stores the result of an expression as a named variable which can then be passed as an argument to another measure expression. Now it might sound complicated, but let me quickly create a variable in Power BI and show you how this works so that it's easier to understand. So let's begin. I'm going to create a new measure. Let's call this as a test variable is equals to. So the way we define a variable is we begin with typing in var. VAR that's how we define a variable so once you type in VAR you will have to give the name to the variable so let's call this as category 1 now a couple of things to keep in mind while you're defining the name of the variable the name of the variable cannot begin with a number so when you type in a number over here you see that it's underlined with red with saying that there's an error the variable name cannot start with a number the variable name also cannot have some of the reserved keywords like date. When you enter the keyword as date, it's not going to accept that as a variable name. It also cannot have spaces. Now, let's say, for example, you type in category underscore one, it's not going to accept it. So make sure you keep all of these things in mind when you're defining a variable. So let's call this as cat underscore one for now and say is equals to I can assign a number to this particular variable. Now, once we have defined a variable here, so the value 10 is hard coded or is assigned to the variable cat underscore one. And now if I have to return the value which is assigned to the variable, I will have to use the return statement here. I'm going to say return and I can now call the variable here. I can say CAT and you can see that it is now automatically giving us the name of the variable which is available on the top here. And you can also notice the difference in icon over here. I can say cat1 and confirm to this DAX code over here. And let me bring this code into the report view here. And you can see the value here as 10. Now I can define another variable over here. Let me copy paste this and get this to a second line and change this variable name here to two and change the value here to let's say 50. And when I confirm here, my return statement still has the cat underscore one over here. That's why we are seeing the value as 10. But when I change this to two and confirm, I will now see the value here as 50. I can also perform calculations over here. Let's say, for example, if I want to add variable one and variable two, I can do that. So I can say CAT1 plus CAT2. I can confirm this. Now the value changes here to 60. So this is the basic syntax of variables. As we proceed in this video, I'm going to explain the different benefits of using variables like the improved performance, the improved readability, simplify debugging, reduce complexity. So I'm going to explain all of this in a bit. So let's proceed with this tutorial. So I have a measure over here called revenue analysis where I'm using a switch statement to identify whether it's a high performance, low performance or medium performance. So you can see that we have hard coded the values over here. I have 120,000 here. The condition here is if 120,000 is greater than 500,000, then it should return high performance. If 120,000 is less than 50,000, then low performance, etc. Now, when I bring in this measure over here, it returns the value as medium performance. So let's go back to this measure over here. Let's say you want to change this value here to 600,000. You want to change this to 600,000 and you will have to repeat this process here wherever 
120,000 is mentioned. So which is a quite a tedious task. And when I click on confirm now, this value will now change to high performance. So this was a tedious task because I had to change the values in multiple places. Now, what if I use the same thing by defining measures? So let's, I have another measure over here where I have defined the measures. So my base revenue here is 120,000. My threshold is 500,000 and my low threshold is 50,000. And I have this switch statement right here. Now, it helps me understand what my base revenue is. Like if you look at the previous measure over here, I didn't know what this particular value was. But when I look at the measure here, which where I have used variables, I'm able to very clearly say that this is my base revenue, this is my high threshold, and this is my th low threshold. So this is where the variables help you in improving the readability of your measure. Now let's say if I have to change the base revenue here to 600,000, I can simply come here, change this to 600,000 and confirm. And now I only had to change the base revenue at one place and in rest of the places here, it is automatically referring to my base revenue here, which is 600,000 and returning the value over here as high performance. Now let's take a look at another example where variables are really helpful. Let's start, let's say for example, I want to identify my growth percentage. So first of all, let me calculate the sales amount for the year 2022. So I'm going to use the calculate function and say sum of my sales amount from the sales table, comma, filter. And what is it that I'm going to filter? I'm going to filter my sales table, comma, and then I'm going to say year. I'm going to pass in my date field over here, which is the order date. I'm going to close the bracket and say is equals to the year 2022. I'm going to close the bracket here, close the bracket here and confirm again. Let me quickly get rid of these visuals on my report view and bring in the growth percentage that I have over here. What is the problem? I made a mistake here. I should not have added the inverted commas over here. I'm going to click on confirm. And now I have my value here for the year 2022. My sales amount for the year 2022. Let me quickly add two decimal places here as well. And now let's say, for example, I want to calculate the difference between the year 2022 and the year 2021. So what can I do? I can simply copy the entire code over here, say minus and then paste this value here and change this to 21 and confirm. I can now get the difference between the year 2022 and 2021. And now if I have to calculate the growth percentage, I can use the divide function and say divide. So this becomes my numerator over here, followed by a comma. And then my denominator here is going to be the sales amount for the year 2021. I need to paste this value here again close the bracket for divide and confirm. And now I have the value here for the growth percent. So let me quickly change this to percentage, which says it's negative 16%. Now, if you look back at this formula over here, you are calculating the sales amount for the year 2021 twice, which basically is not an efficient way of doing it. This is where it hinders the performance of your measure. Now, if you have to define the same DAX over here, but using variables, let's see how we can do that. So let's define a new DAX measure over here. I'm going to call this as growth percentage variable growth percentage where is equals to let's start by defining variable here. I'm going to define a variable here. I'm going to call this as 20. Oops, I cannot use the number over here. So I'm going to say sales underscore 2021 and say is equals to say calculate sum of my sales amount from the sales table. I'm going to close the bracket here, comma, filter. What is it that I'm going to filter? I'm going to filter the sales table, comma, and then I'm going to say year, for pass in the date field, which is the order date. Close the bracket here and say is equals to 2021. I'm going to close the bracket here and then close the bracket again here for the calculate function to close and then enter my return statement here. Say return, what is it that I want to return? The sales 2021 variable that we have created. So I'm gonna enter sales over here. It's going to 
return the variable and then I'm going to click on confirm. Now let me bring in this particular measure into a new card over here. And now we have the sales here for the year 2021. Let me quickly add two decimal places to this. And let's start by defining another variable over here. Let's call this as 2022 and change the value here to 2022 and change the value here to 2022. And let's click on confirm. And now you're able to see the values here, the sales amount for the year 2022. Now in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that one of the benefit of using variables is to simplify debugging. Now you can see that how we are able to quickly return the value based on the variables over here. In case if I have to, if I go back to my growth percentage over here and from this measure, if I have to return, let's say 2022 data, I will not be able to do that unless and until I remove some part of the code. But since I have used variables in my this measure over here, I can simply change my return statement here to 2021 and click on confirm. And I now have the sales amount for the year 2021. And now let's say if I have to calculate the growth percentage, what I can do is I can simply use the divide statement over here. I'm going to say sales 2022 minus the sales 2021 comma and my denominator here again is the sales 2021. Now notice that the 2021 sales are being calculated only once over here. We are not calculating the sales multiple times. The value here is getting stored in the variable which is sales 2021 and we are repeating that variable here to bring in the same value here which improves the performance of your measure. And when I click on confirm now, I now have the percentage over here. I can change this to percentage format. I now have the growth percentage over here which is basically broken down into different variables over here which helps in more readability. It helps in simplifying your debugging process and it has also improved performance because we are not repeating our calculations in this particular measure. Now let me show you another example where you'll be able to use nested variables. So let's quickly call this as net profit and I'm going to say where I'm going to define a variable over here. I'm going to call this as gross underscore profit is equals to now I can start defining variable here within the variable. I can now define another variable over here and say variable my revenue is equals to I'm going to say 100,000 over here. I'm going to define another variable over here and call this as expenses is equals to 30,000. And I can now add a return statement over here to calculate my revenue minus expenses. So this is going to return my gross profit. So I'm going to say return gross profit. Notice that I have a variable defined over here and within the variable, I have a variable again, I have the second variable and then I have my return statement here. And then I have another return statement for this variable. Let me bring this over here so that it's quickly formatted. And now when I click on confirm mm -hmm. and let me bring the net profit over here, I have my net profit as 70k. Now, things to keep in mind over here, since I have my variable defined over here and I have my return statement over here, I will not be able to refer to the revenue. For example, if I type in revenue over here, you see that I don't have an option to choose this variable because we have completed this particular where statement over here with the return statement. So it gets completed when you have a return statement. Now I'll only be able to refer to the variable that is open in this case, the gross profit. So I can refer to gross profit here, but I will not be able to refer to any of the variables that are there within the variable, like the revenue or the expenses over here. But I can continue to define another variable here. I'm going to call this as tax is equals to, let's say, 20% tax. And now I can have another return statement over here and say my gross profit multiplied by one minus the tax rate. I'm going to close the bracket here and confirm. And now I have my net profit calculated using the variables over here. So you can see that how we have simplified the so you can see that how we have simplified the entire measure over here which is more readable which is more understandable it's also you can see that how we have this 
you can see that how I have defined this measure over here, which is more readable, which is less complex to understand. And it also helps in improving the performance of your measures. So this was all about the DAX variables. I hope you found this tutorial insightful. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found value in it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Your support fuels my commitment to bringing you more in-depth Power BI content. If you have any questions, thoughts or specific topics that you would like me to cover in the future tutorials, drop them in the comment section below. See you in the next tutorial.